Hello, and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, this is a 4.4 litre quad overhead cam V8. What do you think the 0 to 60 on one of these is then? And the 740, which shares the same engine and gearbox. What, in the five seconds somewhere? Must be somewhere close to that. In the six seconds? Seven seconds, yeah, I'm afraid so. 7.4 seconds, 0 to 60. It's truly embarrassing, isn't it? Especially when 118i's M Sports, like my daughter's got, can go just as fast off the mark. No, it's absolutely horrible. Yeah, you would have thought that uh, when the 840Ci and the 740 went from the M60 V8, which was four litres, to the M62 V8, which is 4.4, it would have accelerated quite a bit better, especially as the M62 had a bit more torque. you thought of that they put a taller differential in it just to knock the speed back down again yet yeah, what BMW was after in the late 80s and early 90s was economy and there were so many bits and bobs fitted to the 840 and the 740 that made it go slower but increasing the economy but it really did hurt the 0 to 60 uh, performance figures so, well, this 840Ci does 0-60 in 6 seconds, and it goes like this. Wow, that is pretty impressive, isn't it? <laughs> you can't complain about that, and that's a bit more respectable. So what have I done to this car to change the acceleration from 7.4 to 6 seconds, 0 to 60. Bet you're thinking, well, it's got a supercharger on it, you spent thousands on it. No, I spent around about 700 quid making the car go a heck of a lot faster. And the purpose of this video is to tell you how to do it. Not only that, I'm going to give you some other things to do which will increase the performance that doesn't cost you any money at all. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. There's things you can do to this car to make it go faster without spending a penny on it. So what we do is we start where most people start with the engine and have a look, see what we can do there. And we go through all the things to make this car go a bit faster. The reason the sales were so bad on the 840 was well apart from the sort of crisis with prices of fuel and so on, was the fact it didn't really do what it looked like. I mean, it looked like a supercar, but it actually drove like a sedan. I mean, the 740 E38 and E32 had about the same acceleration as an 840. I mean, that was absolutely ridiculous. The car looks like a supercar, but actually performs like a sedan. It, it wasn't right, and it was no wonder that the sales of these things were so awful that they actually discontinued it in the States in 97, and discontinued it in the UK in 99. Yeah, it looked the part, but it just didn't drive the part. Well, we're back home again now. Should we have a look at the stuff that makes the power out of this engine? Let's start with the cold air intake. Now, the plan with the cold air intake is to get the air coming into the car as cold as possible. And the reason for that is the colder the air is, the denser it is and the more oxygen it contains. So, yeah, the plan is get cold air into the engine and then use a filter that doesn't constrict the flow and straight into the engine. Right, let's have a look at my cold air filter. And there we go then. Yes, it looks just like a normal BMW 8 Series intake, and it is. <laughs> and the reason for that is it's an excellent system. 
I don't need to stick a cone on the end of that. Yep, yeah, I've seen lots of cars with cones stuck on the end of here. Well, math and then the cone, which doesn't leave much room. So normally I stuff it down there or they remove the air filter lower housing and stuff it in there. I wonder how many bees I've got. Oh, not many bees today. Yep, yeah, and then they use a round air filter that looks sort of like that, but a lot smaller because there's no room to put it. And they say, well, of course, um, circular things have a greater surface area, so it restricts the air a lot less. No, it doesn't, <laughs> because that's a filter and it's been rolled up and you expect one to be smaller than that. And look what's happened to the insides of that. I'll try and get it on the camera. Yeah, it's all squished up. So your marvellous circular filter, cone-shaped filter, is now constricting the airflow. It really is. Oh, there's a nice feather there. So yeah, cone filters, terrible idea. But that's not the only reason they're a terrible idea. The other reason is, is that they'll slurp up warm air rather than cold air. Now the BMW system on this car has, as we say, a large area filter, goes down the enormous pipe, and that goes into two air collectors. And they have enormous things that sit under the headlight bucket, go right down to the lower parts of the car. Two of them, so on the V12, um, this side goes into that air filter, that one goes into that one. On the V8, Pippi, then we collect air on this side and it goes across into this air box and then into the air filter. And we actually take the air in from the grills. So we're right at the front of the car, the coldest place we could be. Not only that, is as it goes into the car, it goes into two big air collectors, which are air cooled. And so we get the densest and coolest air we can into the engine. So the cone shaped filters that we quite often see just stuck in here, sometimes they'll put a nice metal cover around it, some sort of attempt to keep the heat out of it, but the engine bay is very hot indeed, especially when you're sitting at lights. There you are slurping in a lot of hot air. But it does two things. First of all, the air is a lot less dense, contains a lot less oxygen, so you get a lot less power, but also you're increasing the head temperature as well. Now the cooling system is designed to uh, reduce the heat to a certain safe temperature, but the localised heat will be in the heads and that means you can have pre-detonation or pinging or knocking, whatever you want to call it. And we certainly want to avoid that. And so how BMW copes with that is they retard the timing. So now you've got a cone air filter in here, you're slurping up hot air, you're stuffing it through to the engine where it's heating up the engine. The timing's been retarded, the air's a lot Den less dense and so you get a lot less power. So if you think you're going to stick a cone filter on, on the end of this and it's making a huge difference, you're right. But you're making about minus 20 horsepower over the standard horsepower of an engine. They do make lovely slurping noises, I'll give you that. If you want a car that just makes lovely slurping noises and doesn't have any performance, go with a cone filter. You know you want to. But for a car which gets a lot of performance, safely filtered by a large area filter, designed for the car, then use the standard stuff. Also worth pointing out with cone filters is that the airflow isn't determined. And that means the airflow going into the math isn't measured correctly, so you get the wrong fuel air mixture as well. So yeah, no good at all. So number one, cold air intake. You've got one already, and that's the same on the E32 and the E38. Don't go sticking cone filters in there. It may make a lovely slurping noise, but you're throwing away horsepower and you're stuffing heat in the engine, which you really don't want. Okie doke, so that's fallacy number one. Cone cold air filters let less air in. They put hot air into the engine and they throw away your horsepower. So let's stick this back on before I forget about it and then drive off into the sunset with <laughs> part of my pipe work missing. There we go, we're on. Oh, 
Oh, and one last thing before I stick this back on. You would have thought this grid here is going to constrict the air to some extent. And I've seen lots of people remove this thinking it's going to work great. That completely knackers it. <laughs> this here stratifies the air as it goes past the math element. And without this, it doesn't read the amount of the mass of air going through the past the math and then you get the wrong fuel air mixture and it really does mess up the mixture quite to an extent you wouldn't have thought removing this <laughs> it's going to make much of a difference well it does it really messes up the performance of the math leave it as it is it's got a nice big trumpet here to slurp in the air from the top of the filter this stratifies the air it measures the air, the mass of the air properly and you get the right fuel air mixture I told you once, I've told you twice, leave that alone. Right, just thought I'd quickly show you where the air goes into our engines through these two air vents here. As you see, they're slightly cone shaped, so they act well to uh, condense the air coming into the car and it builds up. A small amount of pressure in the air collectors uh, which are cooled as well by the movement of the car so yeah these are the air intakes two air intakes um, V12 slurps air from that side for that well goes crosses over to that bank slurps air and from this side crosses over to the other bank V8 collects both sides it's got a cross pipe that joins the two together so lots of air and also you can imagine that as the faster you go the more air pressure you're going to get at the front of the car and the more performance you get out of the car as the air is further compressed into the air boxes. So it's an excellent system. It takes up a huge amount of space in the front of the car, it really does. The air collectors are massive, must be probably about half a cubic metre each. So you've got a cubic metre of air collection at the front of the car, cooled, compressed by ram air into the air intakes here and then fed into a wide area air filter so yeah very efficient system fantastic and i've seen this mod done quite a few times and it's the viscous coupled fan because people take say that the viscous coupled fan takes about five horsepower 10 horsepower 15 20 30 horsepower from the engine no it doesn't not at all most of the time it just idles and does nothing at all it's not taking any load and you can stop it with your hand Here's a video of me stopping a viscous coupled fan while the engines are running with my hand. And once the viscous fluid is all returned, it import, imparts such a small force to the fan, you can stop it with your hand. Doesn't even hurt. No, it does absolutely nothing. Takes probably about one micro horsepower from the engine when it's doing that. Uh, they say, oh, well, it's always seems to be locked up. Well, the only time it's locked up is when the air's not getting through from the front of the car. Have you checked your radiators recently? If you... Right, let's have a look in there, see what we got. Well, that doesn't look too bad at all, the old cooler. That's fine. Anything behind it? No, it's old, but it's okay. Cleared out your radiators. There's four radiators on an E31. I think there's three on an E32 and E38 and the E39. But if they're all cleaned out and you get proper air, airflow through it, the only time this will actually lock up and produce airflow is when you're sitting in traffic and just idling there, in which case performance isn't generally a problem. OK, so the replacement of a viscous couple fan with a metal fan, uh, sorry, an electric fan involves a couple of things. It means removing the fantastically designed air bleeding coolant reservoir. And that's what it does. It's a bleeding system. It takes coolant from the top of the radiator, the highest part, goes through a full four sections of bleeding plates and then removes the air from the system, returns it to the top of the bottle, it can't be taken by the engine because it's all baffled and so replace that with a metal one well you're asking for trouble then replace all the plastic uh, cowling with the Zionsville radiator all aluminium aluminium's a great conductor of heat you know so it's obviously going to work better well no because 
BMW radiators made out of aluminium. I've got an OEM aluminium radiator in here already and it works perfectly well coupled with the fan, the viscous couple fan. Uh, well, well, of course, the, uh, the electric fan, of course, not taking any energy, energy, it just takes power from the battery when it needs to. Well, if you start taking 30 to 50 amps from a battery, its terminal voltage drops, and where does the power come? It comes from the alternator. Now, a viscous couple fan is a mechanical fan. It's joined to the crankshaft pulley, fire uh, section belts onto the water pump pulley and which drives the fan. So very efficient, very efficient indeed. Nothing in the way getting in, reducing uh, efficiency in that fan. But now take the situation where you've got an electric fan. Now what's producing the power? Alternator. Where's the power come from? Crankshaft pulley. And it's about 75% efficient. Then it goes through wires and relays it ends up with an electric fan which is probably about 50-60% efficient you would have thought probably no more than that so you're throwing away half the energy so to produce the same airflow as this viscous coupled fan you're taking twice the energy from the crankshaft pulley so it's twice as inefficient not only that when you don't need the fan to be running and it switches off the alternator's now got to recharge the battery and so you take, start taking a horsepower or so, and it's quite a lot of power, you know, an alternator take. A 150 amp alternator will take around about 2.2 kilowatts of energy from the car, probably about two and a half with inefficiencies. Um, and that's about three, three and a half horsepower. So you're just throwing energy away. Basically, it's, this is all about energy conservation and using the energy to drive the wheels and sticking a metal fan as an electric fan on this is not the way to go you're throwing away inefficiency not only that when this does lock up it moves a lot of air and it's very efficient and you won't get that much airflow with an electric fan it just is not possible with the system as it is modern cars which have electric fans, have completely different systems, different alternators. The way they work is completely different. They can switch the alternator off when you stick your foot flat on the throttle uh, so that it doesn't produce any load. And I think the M62 TUB in the 740 and 540 could do the same, but I can't remember exactly. I know it turns the compressor off. May well turn the alternator off. Um, in which case, when you're sticking your foot down, and you've got an electric fan on your uh, radiator. The energy's all coming from the battery. The fan can't get up speed properly because, of course, the terminal voltage drops straight down, not producing enough cooling, throwing away energy, discharging the battery. And as soon as, of course, you let your foot off the throttle slightly, alternator has to recharge that battery. So, electric fan, no. Now, when the M62, uh, M60 V8 was produced to start with, it had a different manifold compared to what we've got on an M62. A couple of changes were made. First of all, when we went over to the M62, from the PCV valve, so the crankcase fan ventilation system, we have a pipe that goes all the way to the front of the inlet manifold, and then the blow-by gases are shared equally between all eight cylinders. The M60 ones just squirted their blow-by gases straight into the back of the manifold and that wasn't shared so well and cylinders four and eight got most of the blow-by problems so you've got problems with oiling on uh, banks, uh, sorry, cylinder four and cylinder eight which wasn't a great idea, but that's generally just because you haven't looked after your crankcase ventilation system and haven't changed your oil regularly enough, in which case then you probably blocked up the drain tube from the oil separator valve, which is a lot harder to get to. Okay, so, but one of the difference with the uh, M60 manifold had bigger runners in it. The runners were a larger diameter and some versions had horns on the front so it looked as though they were slurping all the air in from the intake manifold. 
Well, one of the problems with the M60 engine was that it just didn't have any low down torque and it really started producing power probably about 4,000 RPM and having owned an M60 it was a bit of a pain because you get to try and get away from the lights and the power wasn't there and then you'd hit 3,000 it was going a bit better 4,000 RPM off you went like a scalded cat. Now one of the reasons for that in fact the main reason for that is the intake manifold and those large runners now in the M62 they reduced the runner size uh, quite substantially so the runners had a much smaller cross section and you thought well this is going to reduce power isn't it no it doesn't it increases torque and the reason for that is that the the air within the runner doesn't stall so it's continually moving and as the valve closes it compresses behind it and then as the valve opens again pop pops the air in there a lot quicker whereas the large section manifolds you know the runners when when they were a large section then the air would stall and then as soon as you open the valve you end up with a depression in front of the valve before it reached the cylinder and it's a lot harder to get the air into it and that was the reason you had this problem with no torque below about 4000 rpm and it was pretty feeble so but people look at the manifold and say ah it's, uh, the m61's got bigger runners in going to get more air into the engine <laughs> a bit like the uh, cone thing at the end of the pipe okay so where are we after part one of the performance upgrade of the car how do i get a speed of well an acceleration of 0 to 60 in six seconds where the standard is somewhere between 7.1 and 7.4 seconds well we covered three things here we covered the three usual modifications silly cone filter on the end of it that slurps up hot air reduces power quite substantially metal radiator and electric fan works brilliantly on modern cars like the e63 and e64 and all that F21s and the later cars, not suited to this car whatsoever. Produces a lot more drag, produces a lot less cooling. So, yep, that one's a no-no as well. And the third one, of course, was the change of the M60 manifold to an M60 manifold because the pipes are bigger. No, nope, that reduces power, uh, it reduces torque, which is more important, a low RPM. And low RPM, we're talking about 3000 RPM, produces a lot less torque there. And so your 0 to 60 time is again lengthened to some extent. So these three modifications, which I've seen done quite a few times on many V8s, not so much on E31s, more on 740s, ruins your performance. And in the case of a metal fan, also allows the engine to overheat to some extent as well. Okay, so where are we getting this performance gain in this car? We're looking in the wrong place. It's not here at all. No, the place where I get the performance is further back. And in the next episode, I'm going to show you exactly what I did to get that extra performance. <laughs> but for now, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.